Can you hear us? We can hear you, can bud. You hear yes. Okay. Let me get my pictures back up. Absolutely. Okay, there we go. All right, hang on, let yes. me share mine so we can get in sync. So I'm going to be sharing photos for you because we um, put together this PowerPoint. So uh, let me know. I'm on uh, the photo of your um, fishing shack on the river. Okay, yeah, the, uh, my name is Bud Herrera. I'm on the Fish and Wildlife Commission. Uh, uh, I am a, a fisherman on the river full time. Uh, these are my scaffolds that you're looking at. Uh, let's see, my shelter. A few other tribes are in there in between there. Uh, I'm up in the left corner. You can see me there. I'm a little camoed out by that big rock. Uh, what I wanted to show with this right here in the background, you'll see the water. And this picture of this water is after they shut the spillways. And what it does is turn our, the water there into a lake. And when they do shut the spillways like this, uh, what I'm, we're, we're all seeing is we're seeing more back eddies now where the water's running up river. Kind of like when they first built the dams, when what they said, like the Little Goose and some of these other dams are making these uh, back heavy back eddies where the water's running up. Okay, with the next picture, this I wanted to just a little bit show you guys like uh, the staff does, our harvest biologists. I kind of took this with the, uh, our five senses, the smell, see, what you see, you feel, you hear. Uh, so I did a, a 10 year, this is 10 years ago. As you can see, the, the fish are a little bigger, well, a lot bigger. You can go to the third screen and show that third screen. This is last year. So you guys can actually see the difference in the size of the fish of what we've seen in the last year, 10 years on the river. Uh, they're saying it's the ocean conditions and, you know, this is right after, you know, the, the, the blob that we all heard about out there. And, and it's the same time of the year. I kind of did the 10 year with last year or two years ago. You can also notice what I'm wearing. 10 years ago, I was in shorts. Last year, we were in long jump. So there is a lot that we're seeing down there. The temperature changes, the water, the upwelling, uh, the, the size of the fish difference. Uh, the, the firmness of the fish, you know, there's a lot to it. The, the way the water is, you know, you can actually kind of see it's a little clearer in the bigger fish to the, the lower one. It was a little dirtier. And it's about the same time of the year. So I wanted to do a little comparison with that. Uh, yeah, that's just about that. You can go to the, the next one with the first foods. I wanted to throw this in. It was pandemic times last year. So this was it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we did a lot of bartering down there on the bank. Uh, I bartered my canned salmon for the roots and uh, the celery, the biscuit roots. I, I know them as biscuit roots. Uh, they're really good. So I was bartering down there, with, you know, as a, as a fisherman in the pandemic. There was only like three of us compared to, I don't know, 30 in recent years. So that's uh, some of what we do as a fish, fisherman on the river. It's not all about the commercial. Uh, last year was a lot about filling our own freezers, our friends' freezers, uh, taking care of the families who lost ones that went on a new journey. Uh, yeah, so that's just a little bit of that. You can go to the the next one is my dry shack. Uh, last year, because of the pandemic, uh, I built my own dry shack, which uh, really played a significant part in my winter with my friends and the family, and this being one of our ways of bartering. Uh, I could trade for gas, like, you know, 
you know, we didn't get out of this place very much. We all, pretty much all of us went into uh, our own quarantine last year, so to say. We didn't have too many people on the river. There was two or three of us. We had some, we were all, excuse me, we were all in our same little bubble. But it was a lot colder last year. And that was one of the things we noticed. Uh, we were we were bundled up. We were seeing freezing temperatures in uh, into March, into April, which was really unusual for us, you know, waking up with frost on your windows and, you know, do we really want to fish? And but as fishermen, we have to get in the water. So that was one of the obstacles we did have with the climate. We're seeing that it's get, staying colder later in the fall, I mean, in the spring. And, and, it's, and when it does come on, the heat is, it comes on. Uh, we've seen a lot more wind. Uh, I have a picture later on about some wind. Uh, we've seen some waves that were six to eight foot waves. You know, the wind last year, there was like three severe windstorms that we had with the climate. And three of us, our trailers actually, uh, our doors got ripped off our trailers. The suction of the wind was so bad that it, it ripped our trailers doors completely right off the, our hinges. Uh, so we did have to move from this area. There was no protection for our trailers. So, uh, yeah, with that, you can go ahead and go to the kids. Where I fish where I'm hooking line, and it's right there in Rufus below John Day. This place where we, we fish is about three miles downriver from the dam. Uh, we try to get the kids down there. These are some of uh, my friends. Uh, they're, it's their first fish. As you can see on the left there, there's a lot of guys around. So when these kids are getting their first fish, we're we're really trying to make sure that they they land it. So yeah, there's a uh, the one on the right. He was my friend's uh, grandson. He got his at I think he was only four or five years old. The one on the left, I'm helping this girl. She was ten years old. She got her first fish. Uh, then we have our own little ceremonies there. We uh, there wasn't much traveling, so we just did dinners there on, for these kids. Uh, they had their own little giveaways, uh, just something small. But we were uh, teaching the kids, uh, you know, how to respect our fish. Okay, the other one is uh, I'm trying to show you guys, you know, my hoops. Those are our hoops that we use. Uh, uh, minor, that one's about, that's my biggest hoop. It's a 26 footer. Uh, I have a bigger hole. Uh, most of mine aren't that big because our holes, you know, the rocks that we're fishing in, you know, you put a big hoop down there, you're not going to catch fish. They're going to go right in those underneath the hoop, you know. Uh, there you can actually see the webbing. I got, a, uh, I think it's a seven and a half. We were, we were uh, running bigger webbing, seven and a half to eight uh, on our scaffolds there. And why we do that is in our webbing is because of the steelhead. This is a full time here. Uh, we have the, the bee run running. So we're trying to, you know, if they can get in there, they'll steelhead, you know, can usually get through the big eight inch. So we do that. And at the bottom on, from my left hand, since I told you about the, the eddies, we're having to, you see that little black line there. That is a, uh, I've got about 10 railroad spikes taped on there. So it holds it down. So the, the water is, is, it's moving this time of the year when they shut those spillways down. Uh, I see. You can uh, probably go to the other one. I'm just going through these fast, and then I'll circle back on some of them. Uh, this is a, the the geese that we're seeing, and there's our swallows. That's usually an indicator those swallows on the right for us fishermen that the the springers are here. But like I said, lately this picture I think was late April. You know, we're usually seeing them, you know, 10 years ago, I'll go back 10 years, we're seeing them uh, in March. 10 years ago, I was catching fish in March. Usually on uh, my, my, my calendar was daylight savings time is usually when I 
a lot of us would get down there and look into it and for our ceremonial fish because uh, they were big and, and they were really nice fish. So a lot of us would, uh, we would get down there a little earlier and uh, fish and start doing for our ceremonials and start getting some fish dried. Usually what I do for the first week or two is try and get fish to people that usually don't get it or they have their ceremonials or their naming. It's just been something that I've been doing and I enjoy doing it. Uh, let's see. The next one is the big waves. When I talked about those winds, this was probably a six. By the time it hit the bank, this turned into about a six to seven foot wave. First time in the, geez, the last 12 years that I've been down there that we've seen anything like this. Uh, this was the, probably the day that most of us lost a lot of stuff. You know, the wind was howling through there so hard. Uh, yeah, it upwelled everything. It took out the bank that we fish on. We lost about three foot of the bank last year because of the wind and these big waves. It was, uh, we couldn't fish. Uh, we did not fish. Uh, some of us went up to the scaffolds, but the waves were so big up there that, you know, it was unsafe to be on our scaffold. Um, yeah, the, the runoff really helped. You could see the, the brown water up there. And uh, that's about 20 feet where it's at. So it was up well in about 20 feet out. Okay, you can go to the next one with the... Okay, on these, I'm looking, you can see the water disappeared on it. This was like, you know, a few years back. I think it was 2015. I wanted, That's why I kind of did this. Uh, we woke up one morning and that's what we saw. Where on the left, where I'm looking back, I'm probably 75 yards out, at least 50 to 70 yards out, looking back. On the right is 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 where we came back out, and within three hours, the water was coming back up. So it was kind of different. It was one of the first times we'd seen that. We're seeing it every once in a while, but nothing to this to this extreme because you know that. You actually can see what's in the water. There was, you know, there was garbage all along this in this mud. There was, you know, there was a tire someplace out there. I think one of our nephews grabbed. There was all kinds of, you know, anchors. There was a couple anchors that some guys grabbed. Uh, so when we actually got to see this water going down, that's what a lot of us noticed. Some of us older guys that look at all the trash. So we know that that's going on while we're while we're fishing when the water is running. So that was just uh, something of some of the extreme. That was really shocking to a lot of us to see this. To wake up, we're catching fish. Next morning we wake up, we don't fish. It was like this for almost two days. So we we did not fish for almost two days. Some guys walked way out there, but yeah, it wasn't it wasn't worth it the time. Okay, on the next one, uh, this I just wanted the the little human contact that we have run into since we've had these more winds. The one on the left was uh, they said it was too dangerous for being in this where we usually park. Uh, so they uh, put a gate up on us. Uh, we went to to our lawyers and stuff and. Uh, the next day they had it down. It was a right of access for us. And yeah, it was just something that, another thing, the obstacle that we, we faced down there with, you know, with the people and the, the core of engineers, just out of the blue, they decided they're gonna put a gate up on us. On the right, there's the winds. These guys are showing up more and more. I know a couple of them, that I know them pretty good. They actually have named, one of the things we've noticed is their name in our fishing site. They have names on pretty much every spot like this. They have a name for a, a three mile. I guess they have a name up there. Down at Mamalus, they renamed that. Oh, down at Stevenson, they've actually put their own non-native names on their website and, and for 
you know, the social media, you know, one day if this guy called somebody, within three hours, we could have a hundred of them doing that. And what they're doing is they're crossing over our lines. They get in our way. Uh, yeah, it's just a one of the human factors with this, uh, the with the wind now and with these guys coming in, you know, I know it's their recreation, but you know, we're it's ceremonial time for us this time. So last year we had a few confrontations, but it was all settled and without any blows being thrown. Because it, you know, because the way the fishing has been lately in spring, you know, every fish is counting for families to have for their freezers and their their ceremonies. Right here, this one is just a little picture of of it all the way up. And uh, the trash that has came up, you see all that on the right. There's a bunch of garbage in there. It's not really, you can't really see it that good, but I do know there was a bunch of garbage in there. And those invasive willows, you look up to the left, they, these are this invasive species of this new willow that's growing along there. I'm not the biological term guy, but they're, they're, they're showing up in droves. I can't remember the name, but they're filling up our whole area. And uh, also with that, I think our chairman was down there. I, I forgot to get the picture. We're seeing that uh, flowering rush. And this area that you're looking at there, usually we can start in, in April and we'll fish till June before that the temperatures rise and it grows. Now it's, you know, we're we're probably pulling out middle of May because the temperatures rise and that that the invasive species are starting to grow a lot more. Uh, Jeremy Wolf, he was down there, and there was one new one that we seen last year. I didn't get a picture of, but Jeremy did, and uh, yeah, I don't know what he did with it, but it was a new a new invasive species that we're seeing, and they're seeing it's coming from up river up by Othello is what one, one fisherman said. Uh, the red, white, and blue. They're, that, I fish at night, so I wanted to give you guys a view, my view. And uh, you can see the difference in the water. Before the spillways are closed, there's, the water's actually moving, there's waves. Uh, yeah, this is off of my shelter scaffold. And uh, the last one there is, just uh, me, we were, uh, this is something different for me. I was fishing during the daytime. So the, the the fish are running at different times now. So I threw this in there to show that I'm actually fishing daytime now too, where I usually never fished until night, until until evening. But uh, I want to drop back on to the, the, the 2015, you know, the, the horrific sights we've seen down there. With this, the the water being, with the with, excuse me, the water where I showed you where all the mud was and stuff. Uh, we don't talk about this too much, but that was a record year for us on the the bluebat. And one of the things we did see, a lot of us seen was the temperatures of the water. I think Gary might have the right temperatures at 72. I think it got up to even maybe hotter than that. What we seen was when we were pulling our fish out, the fish were coming up with no skin on them. Uh, it was it was an ugly sight. They uh, we'd pull them in and and they look half cooked, but they were still flopping on the water on the scaffold. So and then they had boils on them. You know they were actually just cooking. So that was just something about the temperatures that we have seen. And that year, that that bad year of 2015 was, we actually watched these fish just boil up, get cooked, and float down there. Uh, there was, geez, almost I don't know, hundreds of thousands that went by that year, and we were seeing them belly up, floating down the river right below the 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 ladder there. We, you know, they were just piling up, and it was, you know, a lot of us just quit fishing for a, a few days because, you know, it. It didn't feel right, the death that we smelled, the fish. Uh, you see them washed up on the bank. Yeah, so I just wanted to share that, of that blob. And the effect that it took on us, you know, as fishermen to see that was uh, kind of a, 
tough sight to see. Uh, when we're talking about one of the smells and stuff, one of the senses that, that we have, we're noticing that we're smelling more dead fish. I mean, the banks are, there's the invasive species. I don't, we don't know what it is, but we're seeing more and more and smelling more and more of uh, dead fish. Uh, we're seeing more of the cormorant, uh, the white birds, the, the big pelicans, the horned pelicans that 10 years ago, I'd probably see one or two, you know, a little, three or four they run in. That's how they run together or fly together. Uh, but now at night, I can see up to at least a hundred of them at certain times, like when the shad babies or the shad smokes are running or even our smoke in the springtime. And, uh, and when the eels are running. And uh, you know, with that, you know, talking about the, the lamprey, uh, that's you know one 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 of the things we see. I don't hate bouncing around. One of the things we do see with the lamprey on our timing, like the birds, is we start seeing the the hitchhiker marks, is what we call them, the little round circles on the salmon. And actually, this year I talked to our harvest biologist and was asking when are they going to start showing up because we're seeing rings. And uh, is it next week we started seeing uh, lamprey guys? So it was uh, you know kind of like we can see what's happening firsthand by the just the regular mother mother nature just showing us signs that i uh, i believe that our ancestors seen so with that uh i'll take any questions and with the kids i'd like sure i know we have a lot of tribal kids around here i sure would like to a few of those down <clears throat> down on the river. Uh, more than welcome. Uh, uh, Thanks, with that, Dad. I yeah, for me, Colleen. No, I was just gonna say um, thank you so much. Did you have any kind of final words that you wanted to wrap up with? Uh, yeah, just that uh, it was a pleasure to do this, and I was a little nervous. Uh, thank the the creator. You know, for having this opportunity and uh you know it's a, just a, a little fisherman science i guess is what i've been told you know we see a lot that a lot of guys don't see so yeah i'll take any questions and if any of you guys you know you have my number or anything i'll be moving down here with as soon as my shoulder gets ready to fish and we'll start sturgeon fishing next month and then uh, we'll start salmon fishing and you're more than welcome to come down. That's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Um, it, it was inspiring to hear. I mean, it was a lot of what you talked about was really upsetting and um, that's to be understood. And I agree that you are really the eyes on the ground. You are this fisherman scientist and it's really important to hear what you are observing. So thank you so much for being willing to share and it was awesome. So thanks for overcoming that nervousness. Um, I know that we are a little bit past time, but I am willing to stay if you.